I'm sure we've all at one point in our lives watched or read an anime or manga that we really felt we had a connection with. Something that spoke to us on a deeper level for whatever reason that may be. Perhaps it reminded us of an experience we had in our lives or conveyed a message we really understood or had some characters you could totally empathise with. Because of it, we ended up growing a deep attachment to the point where no matter what flaws the thing may actually have, we could easily overlook it because, well, it didn't matter. It didn't affect our experience or why we got so attached to it, and even if others did find flaws with it, we didn't care, as they didn't have the same experience that you did. To us, it was perfect, even if, objectively speaking, the perfect anime, the perfect game, the perfect movie cannot exist. Recently, I was lucky enough to be able to see the record-breaking Your Name in theatres, and it absolutely blew me away. So much so I had to watch it not twice, but three times before getting close to satisfied. And it was after I walked out of the theatre for the third time that I knew I'd find my new perfect anime. Except, I know that critically speaking, if I called this perfect, or a masterpiece, or any other overly superlative adjective, there would be those of us who would argue the semantics of describing it such a way, cause at the end of the day, it's an opinion that's subjective. And I don't know why this word is so looked down upon when we were talking critically about something. Of course I know the film isn't perfect, the characters aren't the deepest, moments of it can play off melodrama, and I'm sure if I thought deeply about it, I can find plot holes cause the film speaks to the heart rather than to the mind. Though none of that actually matters to me because I felt it achieved everything it needed to and there is so much I love about this film that I wouldn't change a single thing about it. I can't remember the last time I saw something with so much charm and beauty to it and there's not just one single thing I could point at to say why I love this movie. The beautiful dichotomy of the lives of two star-crossed lovers learning vicariously about one another, capturing the carefree nature of adolescence like that melancholic feeling of watching a long summer's day passing by. That dreamlike quality of longing for something that seems preordained yet lost, while mixing in themes of fantasy, long-distance relationships and natural disaster, somehow weaving all this into a compelling narrative. There are so many elements blending together to create a piece of work that spoke to me on so many levels that went beyond just breaking down characters, animation, writing and music. I walked out of the theatre with the same bittersweet joy of meeting a lost friend you wouldn't see again for a long time, with a reignited passion for this medium I love so much, and that's not one thing you can just put on a 1-10 to 10 review scale. To me, it was a masterpiece, and no amount of plot holes, character writing or melodrama could take that away from me, but I know that not everyone will share the same experience I did, or come to the same conclusion. There will be people it didn't appeal to, some will have gotten too caught up in the hype or simply couldn't connect to it as much for whatever reason, and that's fine. No one will ever create a piece of work that would appeal to absolutely everybody, so why is it that we pretend a good review is something that can objectively break down what makes a piece of media good or not? Many self-proclaimed critics I've seen always harp back to the writing and characters as the absolute backbone of what makes something good as if there's only one specific formula to making a great show, which is something I totally disagree with. Sure, there is a guidebook and theories to what makes good filmmaking and storytelling which applies to the majority, but we shouldn't forget what they are. A guide, not an absolute. And there are exceptions to every rule. Every anime sets out to achieve something different, and part of the charm of certain movies or shows is the way they are able to impress you even if it clearly has flaws, or sometimes even embracing them. We say show, don't tell, then along comes the Monogatari series showing us that we can craft an interesting story almost entirely through dialogue. If characters and writing were all that mattered, then we wouldn't get things like the mind-blowing visual extravaganza that was Redline. Gurren Lagann came to celebrate the cheesy heroic tropes we all thought we were tired of, and the ending of Evangelion was such a raw, unfiltered outcry of emotion that, love it or hate it, has remained a topic of discussion and a resonating moment for many people to this day. So what is it that really makes the show mean something to us? The conclusion I've come to is that there is no single technique that portrays this, but there is a common driving force I've felt from all of these shows. Passion and communication. At the end of the day, anime is a form of art, a way for the creators to communicate to the audience in some way, whether it be an idea, a feeling, an experience, or something else. And my favourite shows are the ones where this communication really resonated with me. Maybe it was a hype scene, a beautiful moment, a genius piece of writing, and I'm sure you all have your own personal examples. 
Which is why I feel like the best critics are people who can break down why a movie or anime appeals to them and what aspects of it would appeal to an individual audience member rather than a blanket statement of why it's objectively good. Nothing about this is objective, so instead of condemning subjectivity, why aren't we embracing it? Most of my favourite ever shows had nothing to do with taking off some predetermined categories, but some aspect or feeling that I really liked about it. Recently, I've seen an increase in people embracing the critical analysis of anime, which is great, you know. There's nothing wrong with promoting a smarter way of looking at a medium, but I think in doing so, I feel we've created a community that upholds having a higher knowledge and appreciation of the inner workings behind your favourite shows more than just having fun. It is possible to embrace critical thinking while acknowledging the subjectivity of it, so we may joke about it, but there's certainly no such thing as a bad taste in anime. In fact, I think the worst thing you can do is either keep a closed mind or alter your taste so it's more respectable. I've seen far too many people try to hide the actual tastes because they think it's too mainstream or too trashy or something that isn't critically acclaimed. There's nothing wrong with your favourite anime, even if it doesn't tick all the boxes in characters or writing or cinematography or if you just like it for some really stupid reason. And there's definitely nothing wrong with thinking some critically acclaimed shows are just boring as hell. If you can unashamedly say, hey, I just really like this trashy show because it was trashy, all the more power to you. I unashamedly hold Love Hina close to me because it reminds me of a time when my adolescence romanticised the concept of just finding a partner who would accept me. And every so often, another show comes along that just appeals to that side of me even if I know it's absolutely trashy. Your tastes reflect who you are as a person. Your interests are shaped by your experiences and upbringing that made you the individual you are today. So why the hell shouldn't you be proud of that? It shouldn't be about having superior taste. It shouldn't be about showing off how much knowledge you have. And it definitely shouldn't be about showing how much smarter you are than other people. It should be about keeping an open mind, embracing individuality, and most of all, having fun. I'm the type of guy who can be gawping at the complex narrative presentations seen in Satoshi Kon's work and then arguing over which Monogatari girl has the most appealing bust in the same conversation. In fact, those were some of the most interesting conversations I've ever had with some of the most interesting people I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. Whatever shows hold a special place in your heart are special because that's the person you are. So don't forget that. And I guess all I really wanted to say through all this mindless rambling without any real point I was trying to make was that I saw an anime the other day and I liked it a lot. It was pretty great. No. In fact, it was perfect. <laughs>